In today's focus, we're taking a trip back in time to look at where we humans came from. You've probably heard of the Neanderthals. For a long time, they've been portrayed as grunting beasts, and the belief has been that we humans developed separately from the Neanderthals. But now, there's new research to suggest that there's a little bit of Neanderthal in all of us. Before disappearing from the face of the Earth 28,000 years ago, Neanderthal shared a common offspring with Cro-Magnon man, an early Homo sapien. They hunted the same territories and lived through the same dangers in a cohabitation that lasted for 10,000 years. Neanderthal appeared 400,000 years ago in a region stretching from the Middle East to Europe. 300,000 years later, Homo sapiens crossed paths. How is this discovery significant? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's a major uh, scientific advance. Uh, if a few years ago somebody would have told me that uh, we would be able to obtain the complete uh, nuclear genome of an extinct species of, of human, I would not have uh, believed it at all. Um, but uh, it happened. And um, w what's important to understand is that beyond um, uh, the study of the Neanderthals themselves, this uh, discovery is important to understand the, the very nature of, of modern humans. We can really understand what makes modern humans uh, really different from the other uh, living beings. Is it possible to say though, what is Neanderthal about us? How has Neanderthal DNA sort of impacted modern humans? Well, um, first of all, the, the, the study showed that uh, this uh, integration of um, genetic material uh, is visible only in non-Africans, in, non in Asians and, and Europeans, and this is related to the, the way this um, uh, crossing between the two uh, species occurred. Um, but it's, it's very limited. It's between 1 and 4 percent, and it's very important to understand that uh, out of the uh, 3.5 billion uh, base pairs, uh, which are the coding of our uh, DNA, only 3% are really what geneticists call genes. But okay. what we know is that we have some genes in modern humans which are different from <clears throat> what uh, is found in Neanderthals. Jean-Jacques Coublin, let me stop you there because I want to turn to Dimitri Karadimas now. Now, you're an anthropologist, so you're looking at this from a slightly different angle, but how do you think that this discovery could impact the way that we look at ourselves and, and our origins? Yes, I think it's uh, quite interesting, it's fascinating, uh, 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 just because we, uh, we had this idea that uh, we, c we could be uh, a completely pure species, uh, in that uh, I mean that uh, uh, Homo sapiens uh, could be something uh, completely different from the other uh, uh, hominids that exist. Now, if the result uh, that is bring uh, to us uh, shows that uh, actually for a part of the uh, actual humans, we have uh, some elements coming from the Neanderthal uh, genes, so it will be interesting because cannot uh, 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 go on with the idea that we are a complete few species. Mm -hmm. So we have something common with another one. So there's a lot more than just science in all of this and sort of how Neanderthal DNA is impacting us. It's also how to do with the, the, our own self-image. Here's Newsweek, the way we were. And here is a sketch of after studying over 2,000 skulls this is a sketch of what scientists now believe Neanderthal man, caveman, looked like. We now know that Neanderthal man was not primitive man. He was the ancestors of modern-day Dutch, German, Scandinavians, etc.